As we will recall today being the 23rd of October is a day that has been set aside by the Supreme Court to actually listen to the appeal submitted by the PDP and also the Labour Party, also with the APM. Now quite a lot of expectation coming from Nigerians and um, every party is very optimistic that they will win, especially the PDP and also the APC have come out to say that they are sure that the verdict will be in their favor. So these and other you know, um, issues are what we will be looking at today on Nigeria. Now I am Sela Elisha Dasham and I'll be doing the program together with Rachel Tansi. Good afternoon. Rachel. Afternoon Sela. How are you doing? I'm fine. How about you? I'm great. Thank you so much. All right, please, so our viewers, do remember we are live on Facebook and in YouTube. You can follow us live there. Drop your views concerning the issue of syrup suing um, the House of Reps and also presently looking at what the appeal from submitted by the PDP and the Labour Party will be in the Supreme Court. And I'd like us to dive straight into the discussion without waste of so much of time. Now, quite a lot of things, Richard, in mind. I mean, looking at what Supreme Court is going to say, and then a lot of this party being optimistic that this is how it will be. Now, we will record that as the Supreme Court today hears the appeal challenging the electoral victory of President Bola Tinubu. The ruling All Progressive Congress have expressed confidence that the president will come out victorious. Tinubu's victory in the February 25th presidential poll is being challenged by the People Democratic Party and the Labour Party. The opposition parties have earlier lost at the presidential election petition court where the first challenge the neighbor's victory. This plays with the verdict of the PEPC, both parties and their candidate that's talking about Atiku Abubakar and the Peter will be proceed to Supreme Court which has fixed today for the hearing. And Rachel, yesterday we've seen both spokesperson coming from both parties talking about the PDP and also the APC being optimistic that they believe so much in the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court is the more like the final of bus stop as it is presently because and a lot of times when you look at the issue of the tribunal, a lot of Nigerians have come out to say they look forward to a time where the court will not have to determine all of this. I mean, a lot of people are coming out to say that this is an assignment that INEC is supposed to have carried out during the pre-election because some of the things that this, um, talking about the opposition parties are submitting, I think that should have been checked before the election actually held properly talking about the issue of whether the result may be forged or not because mm -hmm. there were allegations that came in to say that the result that the APC candidate is talking about to be submitted is a fake result mm -hmm. and we saw where the PDP had to travel all the way to Chicago just to get an evidence that this is not true mm -hmm. and we're seeing also the Labour Party candidate Peter Albe also came out to say that express their own Nigerians and explanation of who he is. He needs to do a reintroduction of who he is. And to a large extent, it looked more like an embarrassment. Because if you listen to the statement coming from these parties, it look more like Nigerians do not know who their president is because that is only an explanation to why you will ask the president to reintroduce himself. So right now, a lot of people um, withheld a lot of things they have to say to say, let us wait for what the Supreme Court is going to do. Today we saw where one of the judges will be retiring soon. So we are left with out of 21, just 10 judges right now will determine the fate of these three or actually four contenders that are in the court. So Richard, I want to have your take about this back and forth, you yes. know, not being satisfied with the appeal court and then going up to the Supreme Court to see what they have to say about it. You know, Sela, I believe that the hearing at the Supreme Court is going to be a very interesting one because this time around, is there's no even INEC in play. It's not about whether INEC did the right thing by um, 
um, transmitting the result is not about IRF, it's not about technical glitches, it's not about any other third party coming to say, I was supposed to do this, I didn't do this. It's not about the court saying, I don't have any um, anything, any law holding them that they must give the result like that. This is going to be a game of facts and proof. And that is the interesting part about it. It's, it's all about countering and proving, countering and proving. And it's all about the best team that has the most fact and the proof winning. Because um, so weeks back, like two weeks back, we saw where the BBC is saying it wasn't forged. I think this is what is going to be a this is what is going to be at play here we will have the lawyers speaking for pdp bringing out all the facts to prove that this certificate is forged and we will have all the um, um, um the lawyers from the side of the apc proving that it is authentic and also we saw in the paper where they're talking about how um the name um sadiq for abu Bakr, why uh, yes for atiku why is his certificate having a different name and he talked about we saw it earlier today where he has an affidavit showing that he signed and then the case all about it that it was signed on a saturday and he's coming out to say on uh, uh, way back in the 70s um we the courts were open even on saturday Today. So it's all about now the PDP bringing out the fact that yes, this is the affidavit for this change of name. This was the reason there is document, well, do well documented proof that there was a reason behind this change of name. Here is it in the court of law and whether Saturday was not. So these are all things that people could think dig rather and bring out their proof and same for the forgery of certificate. It's all about bringing your case strong and in the end. It's all about the PDP proving that it is the forged certificate and in the end it's all about the APC proving that it is an authentic certificate with every other proof backing that the, um, their candidate went to school, President Tinibu went to the um, University of Chicago and this is an authentic certificate and it's left for the PDP and in the end it's, it's all about who's fact and proof as ways the other so it is an interesting one and i believe for both parties their confidence is not in the supreme court but it's in the good job that the lawyers are going to do because in the end it's what you present to the court that determines the verdict of your case so both can be confident of course it's not surprising that the pdp will be confident i believe the apc team is also very confident about the verdict because i believe they have proof showing that this is an authentic um, certificate and the back and forth can keep going and it's all about whose proof outweighs the other in the court and that is how the supreme court's ruling is going to be and it's going to be an interesting one and either way if the apc march is still the winner the pdp apm labor party we will still have angry nigerians because regardless of how fair a ruling mm -hmm. is your side don't have to be the winner at the end of it all so we are going to see a lot of interesting back and forth but in the end i believe justice will prevail yeah, rachel and, and in fact that is it for me i just hope that justice will prevail because a lot of nigerians are really hoping and trusting yes. that the supreme yeah. court will do a good job and you know um all through the issue of this back and forth on the case a lot of nigerians have we or will I say we made to ask this question of whose responsibility is it to cross check all of this? Mm -hmm. And I remember I said that I feel that if every of this party had actually done their job well before fighting each candidate and submitting it at the primary to say, Okay, this is our flag bearer. We have verified every other thing, we wouldn't be having the issues we're having here. If only I never went and cross-check what every of these parties said. Okay, you said this is your flag bearer. Are you sure everything? I clearly remember before the elections, um, Rachel, uh, I was supposed to have an INEC official who didn't make it eventually for the interview. And this was one of the questions I was hoping to ask. Whose responsibility is it to make sure that everything being submitted by these candidates are true? Because we know that according to the Electoral Act, one of the mandatory things that each of these candidates are supposed to make is to have a certificate yes. of education. Let us know you have a certificate that you went through school or equivalent. So a lot of people are having, you know, what I say, uh, just like we would say, it looks as if I next to Nigerians, but then 
the deed has been done and right now what we are looking for is to make sure that we don't have a repeat whereby the court every time because only time yeah. we didn't see people going to court was in 2015 mm -hmm. but every time we keep seeing people are going to court until they were seeing the court is shaking a lot of people there tend to be a lot of shaking in the house where we are seeing a lot of people are being dismissed by the appeal court so you begin to ask questions if you are bringing certain evidence i mean why did this evidence actually mm -hmm. Um, had so much weight then why is it having weight right yeah, now yes. so our fingers are crossed and we hope that uh, like we said the supreme court will do a good job mm -hmm. so let us wait and see how this whole thing will be just like you said let us hope that the judges or the lawyers from all of these parties mm -hmm. will do a good job nobody's case will be dismissed out of the of court of eventually course, now still looking at the issue federal government and, and then looking at responsibility we're seeing syrup have actually taken it upon itself to sue the reps or you can say litigate the, the mm -hmm. reps because we've been having an issue of them um, getting a car talking about SUV about 360 that is one one for each of the members of the house of rep and they were talking about spending about 56.7 billion naira. So that is to say, for every of these cars, we're talking about 150 something 160 million naira. Mm -hmm. And you know, I couldn't help but go back, Rachel, to think about what happened during when the EFCC, during his screening, when he was talking about fulling of certain money mm -hmm. that is being lost to talking about the issue of contract forge. And then he took his time to break down what each of this money would have been used for in that making of this road, yes. providing of education, mm -hmm. making of houses and all of that. And then I have to take my mind down to this money. Talking about 56 point something billion, Rachel. And then why don't we have our House of Reps trying to even patronize the cars that we make here in Nigeria? That is one for me because, of course, we want our lawmakers to be comfortable. But then looking at the amount that they were seeing syrup is pushing forward because in August we had the same thing when we actually wrote the letter, sued the Senate for trying to get bulletproof cars and they have asked the president to use his executive power to make sure that this does not pass through. But when we're looking at cutting the cost of governance mm -hmm. and then looking at our lawmakers that are meant to make certain laws, and we keep saying that nobody is above the law, let the rule of law take its place. But sometimes you can't help but imagine that maybe we are having the rule of man. That is to say certain people are exempted from certain rules mm -hmm. and then some people have to go on that, this law. So right now it's a question of who does the law like? Who really is under the law? Who really is above the law? That is the question for me here, Richard. Sally, they don't need 160 million naira worth of car to be comfortable. Even if they were to be drive, driven in a Volkswagen Beetle, Sally, they are very comfortable. The fact that you have everything at your disposal, there's, you don't pay for anything that you do as it is now. You don't pay for for food, you don't pay for your utilities, you don't pay for energy, you don't pay for even filling off your car, you don't, f you don't pay for anything. You have security aids, you do have motorcades, it might not be as much as that of the president, but they do move in convoys as we do, as we do know it, and these are all running into the cost of governance. So trust me when I say they don't, we, because sometimes we keep saying, yes, we know they do need some comfort, they are already very comfortable. They don't need a car worth 155 going down to 160 million naira to be comfortable. I believe this is extravagant on a, not a lot of level. And instead of you as lawmakers sitting down and thinking of bulletproof cars, why don't you do something about the security of the country? Because, I mean, if we were secured, or except if you're making enemies somewhere, you shouldn't be worried about a bulletproof car. But I guess they're all moving with the fact that they could be as assassinated or attacked. And all of that, it, it already shows the decay in our system that um, lawmakers are not even supposed to be moving with such fear. Prime ministers and presidents should worry that their government can be toppled or something like that, but not senators and honorables in the House of Representatives. In as much and as I'm not trying to 
downplay their security but it shouldn't get to that point where all of them feel the need for certain things like that because you should try to make your country secure and all of that and then if we are going to set up have, have every reason whatsoever to sue because trust me Sela, when we will have the breakdown of our budget def mm. uh, of our um, proposed budget you would see how much will be going into running governance and it's 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 going to be outrageous whether we like it or not if we are permitting things like that sectors that are needing so much money will not have it because we have a government we have lawmakers that are sitting down signing and approving 56 billion naira for cars when we are having the when we are having our doctors leaving and you are yet to give them hazard allowance. And as it is now, you're not trekking to your office. So meaning a car is by the way, you're not trekking to your office, a car is by the way. And then we have a problem where our doctors are living because certain allowances have not been paid to them. And imagine how far this money can go to making our doctors not to leave, that we won't have the option of having retired doctors back to work and just endangering the life of every other person that probably have a longer time to live but will be in the hands of people that have been out of practice for a long for a, a period of time that is kind of significant so I, I just hope Sarah keeps pushing because it's important for the government of Nigerians Nigeria to know that we have their eyes on them and will not stop overemphasizing it. It's, it. We need selfless leaders and this act don't look selfless whatsoever. It looks very selfish, most especially in a sensitive period like that where we are having an economic breakdown. Priorities are yet to be urinal and people are wanting cars of 155 million naira and people are yet to see 25,000 naira as palliative to households of a minimum of five people. And you can imagine how much that is a month. And then we are seeing people willing to put this much to vehicles. And then it's, it's sad, but we just hope that our leaders should wake up and want to be selfless, Sally. Richard, you know one thing for me, I think um, over the years, people who have been in position of leadership did not see leadership as serving. Yeah. Rather, they saw leadership as being served yes. because they failed to realize that you came to serve people, not for people to serve you. But the reverse is the case in our country. And you remember in the morning I said I couldn't help but go back to the fact that when the president said maybe we should start using bicycles to our place of work. And uh -huh. I remember you and I talking about the fact that our roads are not yeah, even for properly yes. for those bicycles we're yes. even asking. And then imagine maybe if you're in Plateau State and then you're in just not and you have to go all the way to, to the ends of maybe Panship to go for work or maybe you have to go to just south. And then imagine using a bicycle to go there. You and I know that Possibly you will get there at the close of work. So energy. it's a question. Sometimes when we when we say things, then we should practice it. Should but over the years, we see our leaders making rules or making laws that they do practice. So it's more like you practice what I say, not you practice what I do. Mm -hmm. And no wonder I do not blame when we begin to have leaders that want comfort. And just like you said, I mean, this money is not coming from your personal pocket. So no. you don't even feel the, the pain it is. Right now we're running on deficit so we do not even have an idea where we are hoping yeah. to get the loan to yeah. be able to budget whatever we have for next year. So just like you said, we're looking forward to our lawmakers that will be comfortable to go back to their respective constituencies mm -hmm. and be sure that they have done something there. Yes. A lot of them cannot go there, Richard, and you mentioned the fact that no one that they need bulletproof cars. You didn't do the right thing, so you were afraid that somebody somewhere is after your life. If you've done the right thing, I mean, your people will be willing to even take the bullets for you. Exactly. Why? Because you have done the right thing. So we're looking forward to leaders that will be selfless. We're talking about our corruption index that we had 150 out of 100. 80 countries or 120 out of 180 countries then you know that when our, 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 our index number is even still we're still corrupt when you look at mm -hmm. the corruption index so i always hope that our leaders will realize that we need to do the right thing well let's look at the last story we'll be looking at today it's three months rachel yeah. and i don't know if you've heard about what's happening about the student loan 
I mean, mm. ever since no the word. president made mention of that in June 14, precisely, mm. he said that the committee will be set up and the, the CBN governor will be in charge of setting up that committee, everything that will be needed. There will be a special education bank where we have a number mm -hmm. of people in the committee. The likes of NAS will be there, the AUC will be there, and then a number of other people will be part of the committee to be sure that a bank is there, the portal is open, mm -hmm. You submit certain criteria that are needed yeah. for you to be able to access it. That is to say that you do not have any pending loan anywhere. And then the only way you can even get that loan is the fact that it's either your parent or you is earning below 500,000 mm -hmm. Naira annually. So quite a number of things. And we had back and forth people not being very satisfied with the, you know, some of the criteria that are needed. But regardless, a lot of people were looking forward to yes. that because that will help them to be able to send their work to school. Yes. And the reason why that scheme was being introduced so that nobody will be denied the opportunity to have education. But then we're yet to hear a word. A lot of people have come out to say maybe because of the complaints that came in, so maybe the committee are trying to review the bill and see how it's going to be. But nothing is coming from anybody. Nobody is saying anything. No explanation has come. October will soon be finishing, and there we do not know when the government is hoping to start doing something about the issue of the student loan scheme. You know, Sarah, student loans is always through the school. As if Nigeria want to start up a corrupt system that won't work but just give room for more embezzlement of funds, then I believe that if they want to truly set up a channel for loan that will work and everybody will benefit, and then subsequently the remittance will also move in smoothly, then first of all, schools have to set up a student loan office because it is through the school that students will go and apply for loans. Because this loan is not supposed to go to anybody's pocket. It's not supposed to go to a guardian's pocket. It's not supposed to go to the student's pocket. It is for tuition fee. So when the, when the school, the institution is able to have a student loan office, then as you have gained admission into the school, because one of the criteria is that you must have gained admission into a, a, a tertiary institution. So the school is very well aware that this is our candidate, this is our student for this period of time. Then you go through the school, you apply for a loan, and then this loan comes to the school and is being paid for you. Therefore, nobody is going to, no individual, no word, no parent is going to handle loan, but the school um, being able to handle this loan directly. Now, the school is going to be able to keep tap on students when you start, be it at what level you started, 200, 300, 400, 100 level, when, whatever level you access that loan. Now, whether we like it or not, the school also will be able to keep tap on these students concerning the loan. That is, at what year are they supposed to start remitting back this loan to the school? and then the school lies right back to the federal government. So until the government sits down and creates a proper channel for loans, then I think it, it's, it's just going to be another room for people to embezzle funds in this country, Sele. Until the government sit down and create the proper modalities, the proper template channels, and all of that. And I believe that the time frame given is not realistic, Sele. Three months might look like a lot, but for certain things that you, for setting up something that you want to flow for a long period of time, this is not just giving loans and going, this is not grants. This is not a scholarship. This is money that needs to be remitted back and not within a short period of time. It's not a bank giving you two years, no. These are people that might access this loan in 100 level and then for a medical student, engineering student, that will do five, six years. This is a very long period of time. So give or take, before they will start remitting back this loan, it's like 10 years. Exactly, Sele. So you have to create a way that you will be able to keep tap on these people, that they will be able to start remitting it back. So when you look at it, it is not palliative. It's not 5,000 naira going out or 25,000 naira for three months. This is a lifelong thing because we don't know how long it will take back. So the time frame for which it will be achieving for me to be out there. The, the, the government predicted it or estimated it, estimated it 
poorly and that is why it feels like it's taking long but if only they had given a workable time frame then i believe nigerians will patiently wait for it to kick off the responsible office that needs to be created and everything will be put in place and this is always the problem implementation has always been a problem in nigeria and i'm looking forward to a government that wants to get it right not just talk just for talking sake but when you say something say it without giving a time frame because you haven't sit down yet and know for sure exactly how long will it take because it makes the implementation looks like a flop and the moment we start having cracks in implementation it's not going to be successful no matter how great that thing is supposed to be you know while you're talking about implementation i couldn't help but take cast my mind back to the issue of the naira redesign yes where we saw the uh, the cbn governor then he was so eager to have a redesign without actually test running to see how this thing will be we'll certain things modalities were not True. put in place to make sure that when you are retrieving the old currency the new currency will be in circulation as fast as possible so people will have access to it so we look forward to see when the government is set out to do something have the right modalities have the right thing being done i mean richard this is not the first time this scheme was first introduced in 2014 by the former mm -hmm. um speaker femi bajabi I mean, that's talking about in 2016 and then it was revisited in 2019 yeah. before it was being you know into implementation right now the present administration mm -hmm. have to have taken it up so it was expected that maybe hopefully we should have actually have certain things templates on how we're hoping to run it mm. but just like you said this is a long term you know it's not talking about something short that yes. you can just have it back so we'll right now we are not going to give up on the government we're Richard. Not. so we we'll put our hands you know tight and we hope that they will do the right we thing so. to make sure they implement that well richard i think that's how far we can go on the program Thank you so much to our viewers and also to our supporters for keeping the date with us on Nigeria now. Until tomorrow, do have a blessed day ahead.